Hello and welcome to the TTI Distribution Download, the podcast where we talk about all things happening in the world of electronic components with the specialists of TTI. Thanks, Jim. Hey, everybody. And thanks for plugging into the TTI Distribution Download. I'm Steve Borhoski, and I'm a Connector Business Development Manager at TTI and have been in the electronics industry for over 30 years, four here at TTI. In this episode, we're welcoming Corey Jenkins, Senior Director of Business Development of Harding. Our subject matter today is why hardwiring has no place in modern factories. Before we get in, uh, Corey, would you mind introducing yourself to the audience and sharing some of your experience at Harding? Yeah, sure. No problem. I'm, I'm also a business development manager here at Harding. I've This is going on my 24th year here at Harding. I've had many different roles, product management, you know, engineering, business unit manager, that sort of thing. So I've been involved in connectorization, cable assembly production, that's kind of been my uh, last quarter century here. So now I'm focused mainly on kind of the new emerging markets like data center and, and semiconductor. But uh, yeah, that's my role. Thank you. Welcome. And we really appreciate you sharing some insight with our audience today. So the subject matter being why hardwiring has no place in modern factories. Can we maybe begin with uh, what is hardwiring and, and how has it historically been used? Yeah, so hardwiring, you know, it kind of means kind of the same thing at the core. So hardwiring, in my mind, is is not using a connector. So bringing a cable or conduit or wires into a cabinet, let's say, or a motor, uh, and in most cases, at the end of that cable is a wire ferrule or a ring lug going right to a terminal block. So think of like a one-time connection. I think a good analogy I use is like your your panel inside your house, right? That's hardwired. That's kind of how we, we describe it. Okay. So it's kind of like point-to-point -point wiring. I sometimes have heard that terminology be used in, in factory automation or in electrical panels within factory floors. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good way to describe it. Point-to-point -point kind of one-time connection um, is basically hard wiring, something that, right, you're never going to disconnect, never going to fail, that type of concept. So why would you choose or why has that historically been used in, in place of connectors? Well, I mean, if you if you have a situation where, right, we work for a connector company and we like to think connectors can be used everywhere, but sometimes a connector doesn't make sense, right? If you're in a position where you have something that's never going to be, never going to fail, is going to be modular, right? It's all manufactured in the same place. You're not so much concerned about the assembly time and that sort of thing. And maybe it's a throwaway item, if you will, or you're never going to maintain it. And th those concepts are not really... Uh, that common in the machinery world, right? You want it to be modular. You want it to be um, maintained. You want it to be um, quick assembly time, no errors. So it's not really the real life environment when you when you think about, you know, the machinery world or the data center world. Um, so yeah. Okay. So that that helps. Me. Having come from a connector background myself, working for a manufacturer before joining TTI, I'm certainly got a bias towards connectorization. So. Why would you say connectors are, are a better option? You, I think you kind of hit a, a few of the points there, but yeah. how would you characterize the, the main reasons why connectors would be a better option than, than hard wiring? I mean, to, to keep it in like a layman's term, plug and play, right? People are familiar with that term. So you make whatever you're designing, whether it's a data center or a machine or a train or whatever it is, plug and play. So once you do that, the advantage is, right, it streamlines your engineering, your design process, your building process, you know, it also reduces your startup time and and reduces the risk that when you go to assemble it on site of your customer, that it's going to be done the right way the first time. Right. It also if if you as a manufacturer OEM are responsible for your own maintenance or warranty costs, it drastically reduces all of that. Right. Think of an item that fails. Maybe they can send it back. You send a part working and they, they plug it in and it works. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that that's just a decrease of their downtime, right? Or increase uptime, however you want to say it. Um, so that's kind of the, the main reasons of, of using a, uh, you know, a connector. The fact that it is connectorized means you can connect and disconnect it by virtue of the connectorization. And I would have to believe, you know, life cycle or in terms of how many times you'd want to change, I'll say the wiring scheme within a, within a piece of equipment or within a control box would have a compelling reason as to why you'd want to maybe use connectors as well. Yeah, I mean, you think that like a like a common scenario, and I'll, I'll use machinery as an example. Most machine manufacturers, and I'm using the, the the term machine loosely, right? A machine, 
you can design a core part of your equipment and you can have the modules around it. Modules can be whatever. It depends on the industry. Um, but then you can you can commonize your core design of your machine and then add on or plug and play all of those different options, right? And one machine may have three of those options. One may have 10, but it doesn't change your design, so to speak. And you can easily plug and play and maintain that, that equipment. So how would installation time come into play here in terms of helping with the decision-making process between hard wiring and connectorization? Yeah, so the use of connectors, what it, what it really does is it allows you to assemble the housing side or the panel side and the associated cable assemblies in a controlled manufacturing environment, right? Think of like a production line. Everything's tested. So it, it really reduces the assembly time itself of the actual um, termination of the wires. But it also then, when you go to deploy on site at your customer, which is a different environment, right? It could be outside, it could be dirty, it could be noisy. You don't have to do the, the actual wiring on site. So it drastically you know, reduces the uh, startup time for that equipment. Okay. You nice. know, I had a customer, I had a customer one time, um, in the state next to us, he said, Hey, you know, your connectors, they, <laughs> they let me sleep at night is what he kind of told me because he goes, I know when I have all the execs flying from four different countries to see my equipment run that I've already tested it. And I know when I plug it in, it's going to run, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's no questions of miswiring and that sort of thing. So that's interesting. Kind of a funny story, especially yeah. connectors being able to let you sleep at night, uh, having yes. <laughs> my entire career in this industry, I yeah. guess it's uh, giving me both some, <laughs> I was going to say, it's night. also <laughs> led itself to some sleepless nights, but re regardless, it's a good yeah, little yeah. Uh, caveat there. So how about total cost of ownership and, and, uh, and how does that maybe impact the decision of uh, connectorization in this space? I mean, you know, we, we've done a lot of um, look into total cost of ownership, right? It's a term that's used widely and we could easily, you know, say that the, the total cost of ownership is, is really, really high in a connector, which it is. But it totally depends on the situation, right? But at the core of it, the minute you connect to disconnect the connector one time, you physically, you, or you've paid for the physical connector. Okay. Right? That's because connectors, they, they cost money. So you have to be able to um, account for that. But once you connect and disconnect, you've paid for that. That's without realizing any of the benefits that we just talked about. Wow. That's right. Okay. Um, and, and we have an app that's on you know the website where you can kind of take a look at that. But regardless of whether you type in, um, you know, your labor rate or number of pins, it doesn't really affect the story. Connect, disconnect. It's paid for that, that connector. Wow. That's pretty so, cool. And then you add on like everything we talked about, maintenance, reduced installation time, error free, you know, modularization, that sort of thing. Those are all like on you know, added benefits on top of the cost of the connector. Well, it sounds like plug and play, as you described it earlier, is becoming more and more common, more prevalent. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can provide some examples of industries that have adopted it uh, at, a, at an earlier rate than others, but uh, maybe share some insight in terms of the trends that you're seeing. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the, um, the trends that I'm, I'm personally involved in here is, you know, everyone's heard of artificial intelligence. They've heard of data centers and the growth in that market. Right. So what, the, the term that they use is critical path. They want installation time to be minimized with reduced risk and anything that's in that critical path concerning timing, they want to connectorize, right? Because they, they need to expand quickly. So all of the power distribution in that space, you know, is connectorized, you know, so that that's one of the major, major examples. Um, another example um, is in the machinery market, Right, is as as equipment is becoming, let's say, more complicated. Right, I don't think you could find a piece of equipment without Ethernet on it. Right, which wasn't the case 20 years ago. So almost everything, it doesn't matter the industry, has some intelligence in that machine. So you have a combination of of Ethernet control signals and power on that machine. Um, and you know, most people are familiar with right the RJ45 like on your computer. So there's connectorization in every machine, anyways. And then you you can adopt that same philosophy with all the power and everything else that goes with it. So the trend is to connectorize as much as you can, not just the communication, also the power um, and, and kind of the whole machine. You're seeing it even to the ex 
like extremities of like the end of a robot, right? Even the, the cameras, the vision, you know, the, the, the sensors and that, those are all being connectorized too. So all the way down to the incoming power, you know, it's not really limited to like one industry or one section. Connectorization is kind of in all markets. You mentioned the term modularity earlier. I think you mentioned it in the context of machine modularity. Could you maybe share some uh, insight on how that's impacting connector selection? Yeah, so, so you know, if I, I'll rewind about, I guess I, I mentioned I've been Harding 24 years. So we had at that time many, many connectors that were defined number of pin counts, right? This one is for three-phase neutral ground motor, done, right? This one is for 20, 20 pins. Well, in today's world, that doesn't work as much, right? They, people want to customize everything, right? Not just connectors, but everything in their life. Um, so one of the most popular connectors that we have is our modular series that allows you to right pick. We use the kind of analogy of like Legos. I think there are like 200 or so different modules that we have, and you can pick and choose, like I was talking about before, whether it's Ethernet or power, and put it all into one connector. But what also helps is that you can leave right? Maybe a blank spot in that connector. So you can change it easily without changing the footprint of your panel or changing any total re-engineering of your equipment, which allows for future expansion of your equipment without like a wholesale, you know, re-engineer of it. So that like what you just described is like your Han connector, the domino modules that you can put inside the, the Han connector. Would that be an example? Yeah. Of that? Okay. That's right. So yeah, so the 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 domino module is um, basically an extension of our modular series. We've kind of minimized or, or or we've we've cut the size of the modules in half to allow like double the flexibility. Like it, you know, instead of a module being you know one slot, you could fit two modules in the same space as you could fit one before. So it 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 allows you to make the connector as small as possible without any waste okay. of space. Yeah, that, that, I can see how that would play a part in. in the decision-making process yep. and if someone has, has gone yep. through the uh, the evolution of going from hardwiring to connectorization. You know, you, you hear a lot these, in this day and age about uh, labor shortages and more specifically, and, and I'll say skilled labor or electricians that are becoming harder and harder to find. I, I assume that plays a part in the decision that a customer goes through when they decide what to do in this, in this area. Yeah. I mean, so here's uh, um, the answer is completely yes. Right. The more plug and play the equipment, you don't have to account for skilled labor in the region that you're deploying your equipment, right? It's no longer a concern at that point. So there are, you know, certain areas where something gets deployed and they can't find enough electricians to do the installation. I mean, that's a reality in, in some of the, some of these situations. So the amount of work pre-work that you do, wherever it's being assembled, like an example is, you know, let's say the cabinet is being made in Poland but some accessory is being made in Texas, right? In Fort Worth. <laughs> um, but they're coming together being installed in Florida, right? You, you, at that point, you would have to have some skilled labor, but if, if you use connectors, you can assemble the cabinet in Poland, 100% test it, you assemble the module or whatever is gonna be connecting to it in Fort Worth, and then when it arrives in Florida, you put it together, you don't have to worry about um, you know, organizing that portion of the, the labor, if you will. So that would save a lot of money and a lot yep. of time and save a lot of yeah. uh, headaches for sure. Yeah. So, so look towards the future. Uh, what's the, what's the future of connectorization mm -hmm. and, and what role will Harding play as an innovator, I would say in industrial connectivity? Um, are, are there standards that are coming into play mm -hmm. or what, what do you see down, down the, the pike, so to speak? I mean, I see kind of three, three things right we we see everybody wants more power in a smaller footprint <laughs> they want higher speeds in a smaller connector and they want the connectors to be smart they want them to measure more than just the signal going through it right they want to measure you know that the connector is plugged into the right space so and, and sustainability so i'd say those are kind of the four the four things it's like um miniaturization intelligence in the connector and the sustainability is becoming a more recent trend, right? Um, so, you know, what we're doing is we are designing connectors that are more efficient, connectors that have higher speeds and a smaller footprint. And we have more recently um, made a lot of our products more sustainable by, our, you know, the, the way we procure the plastics and that sort of thing. So 
know, sound like small trends, but, you know, trying to s- squeeze more power in a smaller footprint, you know, you're, sometimes you're changing the materials used, right? You're, you're, you're trying to change the laws of physics, which are impossible, but you're stretching it, right? <laughs> Ab- absolutely. So I assume there are standards bodies that surround all of this that usually in, in the connector space, but specifically to, to this part of connectorization, uh, what standards bodies do you get involved with? Uh, well, for sure, UL in the States. Globally, um, IEC is another one, and those are kind of just higher level connectorization type specifications. And then there are certain ones that are um, you know, unique to certain markets right? Um, more so like as you make cable assemblies, which we do, sometimes the assemblies are, are needed to be listed, right? And listing um, is another level of, of kind of approval for the assembly. So UL is important, um, the IC, and then there are some local standards for each different country in many cases that we're involved with. And then you've also got beyond that within certain, I'll say, communications protocol, you might have standards that surround that in terms of the of the form, fit, and function of the part itself and how well it behaves electrically and electronically. So a lot of activity surrounding this, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sure, as, as the industry continues to evolve and knowing that Harding is on the front end as an innovator, you play an important role with setting the stage and with setting the standard that, that others will eventually have to adopt and, and, and adhere to. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, Anything else you'd like to add uh, beyond what we've shared so far, Corey? I mean, I I think we've covered most of it. I I would like to, you know, at at the core, people think, you know, connectorization is plug and play. But at the end of the day, we we help people design, build, test, deploy, and upgrade their equipment easier and faster, right, without risk. That's kind of what we do at the end of the day, whether it's power or signal. Um, and being at like, uh, like a pioneer in the, in the connectivity space, we are pushing the limits, right? When it comes to intelligence in the connector, uh, reduction, um, of the energy lost in the connector, right? Increased efficiency and miniaturization, right? We're really pushing the envelope of that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of at the core, what, what I like to say. You certainly have provided some really compelling information to share with our audience. We we appreciate you sharing your knowledge and insight on on hard wiring and the connectization to the factory floor and, and how uh, uh, industries and, and companies are adopting this. Your comment about you know you you, you made it once and it's paid for itself, I thought was really uh, compelling in terms of the justification for doing this, along with the other aspects of of what this uh, connectorization in across industries can can do for our customers, our collective customers. We we do look forward uh, to future episodes with Harding on emerging markets that help shape the connector development and usage in years to come. And we thank the listeners for plugging in with us today and ask that you tune in again to the next TTI Distribution Download. Thank you, guys. That's it for this episode of the TTI Distribution Download. For more information on any of the topics you heard about today, reach out to your nearby TTI branch at 1-800-CALL-TTI or visit us online at tti.com.